Welcome to the Geeks Assembled podcast. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Hello and welcome to Geeks Assembled and today we're going to be going back to 1982 to the Fright Fest that is Creepshow and now we shall go over to our very own Lee Wilson. Thanks for that uh, brilliant introduction there um, Craig. Um, Yeah Creepshow, 1982, uh, a five story anthology movie. Uh, by George A. Romero of the Dawn of the Dead fame and Stephen King, who's just, well, everybody knows one of the best horror writers going on. Um, it's not that frightening. It's scary places, but it's not a gore fest like most horror movies are. It's, it's sort of um, dark humor, this, and it's, it's not a bad movie. It um, stands up to the test of time. Um, you can say, as I say, you've got five stories. The first one, Father's Day, very good. It's the, the, the body coming out of the ground wanting his cake. Um, that was just that scene just coming out of that. I mean, the scene in the kitchen where he just <laughs> snaps that woman's neck. I mean, that was brilliant. And at the end of the, that, head on the plate, it's uh, very, very good. Um, second story, this is my least favourite. The Lonesome Death of uh, Geordie Barrel, uh, played by Stephen King himself. Um, for me, it just didn't go anywhere. Uh, okay, he found a meteorite, and it took over, took over his body, took over his, his land, it took over the country. You know, because you could see all the green just going down the road at the end of the. Um, it was just a bit. It just proved to me that Stephen King should stick to writing and not acting because he's not a very good actor. Um, then you've got something to tide you over, uh, the wonderful Leslie Nielsen, proving proving he can act straight, no comedy. He he was brilliant in this part, you know, being absolutely awful to Ted Danson, a young Ted Danson. Um, that and at the end there, where they the come back out the sea to get him. Oh, that was a marvellous thing. That I think this is one. Of, I think that is my favourite one in this movie. The third story, the crate. Yeah, it's good. It's a good story. It's um, the creature under the stairs sort of story. Uh, the puppet in that one, makeup or whatever. The creature was not very you know, good in that, but there was a bit of gore in this. And who wouldn't want to get rid of a bickering wife? In that way, shiver under the stairs. <laughs> it was it, that was brilliant out here. But um, and then you get they're creeping up on you with um, Eugene Marshall, uh, a, a well-known actor. In that one, it was like a one-hander. That just him. Um, those, those books. That was just uh, I couldn't have done that to be honest. I couldn't have been in those scenes with all that lot there. I mean, you know, Big thumbs up to him. Um, and at the end, when it was all bursting out of his body. Oh, oh, no, it's, uh, but, yeah, and then to say, this film's also a bookend. It's got two bookends of the young kid, the father and the mother, you know, taking the comic the comic off uh, the young kid, saying, you can't read this. And the, the whole setup of the movie is the comic. You're reading the comic through. That is what a brilliant idea. It's a comic book come to life. Um, but as I said, the young kid in that, as I mentioned just before on the cast, played by Stephen King's very own son. So, uh, all in all, it does stand the test of time. It's, uh, I mean, the, the effects in it are not up to the standards these days, but it's still enjoyable. So for me, I'm giving this an 8.5. An 8.5 from Lee. So now we're going to move on to is he or isn't he? We're not sure. It's Doctor Who Bob. 
I mean, Alid. Am I or aren't I what? Doctor Who Bob. No, I'm not Doctor Who Bob, don't worry. No, I'm, I might be another puppet, but I'm not Doctor Who Bob. Oh, that one, Craig. And I've taught you well, haven't I? I've taught you well. You're doing great so far, Craig. And, <laughs> uh, oh, well, I can't remember what I was going to say now because he completely thrown me off. Um, actually, Lee says he didn't, he liked the second one the least. The second one was actually my favourite one. Maybe because it didn't have any gore or it wasn't scary <laughs> at all. Even though I didn't find anything in this particularly scary, but there are some moments with the bugs and things like that. And when the, um, um, in the first one, which I also enjoyed, the, uh, the cake, where's my cake and it's Father's Day. And uh, I, I, li I like that one, but it's got some, you know, it has got some scary moments where the woman falls against the door, you know, when they go in the kitchen and then the head, the head gets snapped and things like that. The, uh, the second one, I liked it when he kept, um, that the farmer kept on going to the doctors. You know, I thought those scenes were pretty funny. And, you know, with the, uh, with the knife and he's saying this is going to be painful because he's got the green moss growing on his, on his fingers. And <laughs> yeah, I thought that was good. Um, the the third one, which Lee says is his favourite, um, I don't know. I wasn't so keen on that one. wasn't so keen. Uh, what what bugged me a little bit was the telly. Uh, when the, the telly would be wrecked, the telly would be wrecked, and he picks the telly up fine, and the telly looks fine, like it's never. It, it hasn't got any seaweed on it or any sand. It just looks fine. And I thought. No, that telly would be absolutely wrecked. Sorry, that telly would be wrecked. So, and then you got the other two, which, which I quite enjoyed, the one with the werewolf thing, wherever it was in that, in that crate. And then you've got the last one with the bugs, which I enjoyed as well. And everything has to be clean, and it's all very cleanliness. Um, so overall, I think I'll give this a... An eight. I think I'll give it an eight. I thought it, I thought it was quite good. Yeah. So back to you, Craig. An eight. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to move on to our very own Prince of Darkness, who's in the dark because the camera's not working. It's Connor. Hello, everyone. Um, Creep Show is good show. A uh, good show. It's a good show. Because it, it, it sort of is a show, because it's like five stories in one film. So I would count it as an episodic show, as a film. Um, I liked the uh, comic book aspects of it. There was some imagery in there used by George Romero um, that symbolises the comic book sort of aspect to it. The uh, prologue and the epilogue uh, were great. Um, as Lee said, I recognised uh, Stephen King's son, who is a writer as well. Uh, he's written a few novels. Um, and, of course, Stephen King himself was in the, the film, which was great. I always like Stephen King's stuff, and it was great to see him, which is why that was one of my favourites. My other favourite was, of course, the Father's Day one. Topped off with uh, Ed Harris, who's a brilliant actor, currently in Westworld, and he's fantastic in that as well. Um, that was my favourite. It was gory. It was funny. It was a. It was just a bonkers idea. Uh, and um, I, th I think at first the film was really great, but towards the end it sort of starts to lose momentum for me. Um, like a series usually does, it usually has its ups and downs, so it really does work like a bit of a show. Um, yeah, loads of great entourages of actors. As I said, you've got um, Ed Harris in there, you've got Ted Danson, you've got Leslie Nielsen, um, all those great American actors. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, I don't really have much to say about it that no one else has said. So I think overall I'll give this a 7.5 out of 10. 7.5 out of 10. Well, now we're going to go 
all the way across the world to the United States of America with our own Susan. Hello. Um, I liked it. I thought that it was kind of amazing. The, the bookends, the, the comic book was great. Um, I got my first horror comic at, at San Francisco Comic Con this year. And it's pretty gruesome and it's pretty cool. And um, it, this one w was uh, it was signed by the uh, uh, one of the one of the scenes was signed by the artist who did it. And anyway, so that that's it's a really cool thing to have a horror comic. And and there was this huge outcry at one point in the United States over horror comics. And everybody was taking their horror comics to be burned and stuff. And they took a lot of other comics to be burned at the same time. I mean, it was like ridiculous, the, the amount of culture that, get, that gets trashed by burning and stuff. So it's just ridiculous. <clears throat> and so I kind of, I, I kind of understood why, why the kid ordered a, an authentic voodoo doll to, to tor torment his father. Especially, especially since the next scene was a Father's Day, like the whole thing was like my father's uh, ugly to me, and then this is another ugly to me father who comes back from the dead, and so like that had a really cool flow. Like he kind of like whoa, right into it. Anyway, then there was the the um, the one that that was really interesting to me was the the professors at the university who were uh who were struggling with their that the the one wife Wilma and her and her you know drinking and her attitude and everything and and so well the one guy had nothing but like stars in his eyes and it's going to make me really amazingly super cool and powerful and then then his his associate was like this this find is a perfect way to get rid of my unfortunate you know unfortunate and and tormenting wife and so that was really fun and uh the stephen king one was pretty outer spacey fun i liked it and uh, i i i I would say that the the one of the the two of them in the buried in the sand i i I think that you could probably once the tide had come in you know fight your way out, but it was still horrible. It would be a horrible way to go if it was actually cement, like he'd said, but it wasn't it wasn't it was sand, and I think you could fight your way out once the tide came in i mean I think you you couldn't once the water got in there, you can move your arms and legs. It just, it becomes more fluid. That's just the geeky in me. I know I'm just a little on the geeky side, but that's the truth. And then the other thing is like the, the, the bug one. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, I, I've been doing a, a, a bit of exterminating in, in the, the life of my of, of of people around me and so it's just it wasn't it was an incredibly oh, creepy yes cringy shaky uh, thing yes i couldn't believe that that his panic room you know i thought Oh, he's finally, you know, free of the bugs in the panic room. And then he gets eaten alive in the panic room. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Gross. Anyway. And, uh, yeah, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It was No, I'll give it I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10, too, like Connor. I, I'll, I'll go with Connor. That's a good, that's a good round. Uh estimation of it and and back to you craig thanks susan uh so now it's over to me for my review as a seaweed zombie um 
I mean, I, I really, I really enjoy the Creepshow series. So, um, I like both movies, like um, parts one and two. Um, I, from an artistic point of view, I love how they've utilised um, comic book panels um, with animated scenes, and they've used exaggerated lighting and exa and, and camera angles um, to get the right shots and to to get that scare element in um and that's what what no one's mentioned is the actual music as well of of, of this film uh, and the sound effects were just they were so awesome um and quite shocking in certain certain scenes um yeah uh my favorite one i've got two i like the alien weeds one um and I didn't know it was Stephen King after all these these years of watching it. I didn't have no idea. Um, but I also like the seaweed zombies because I've never seen a an underwater zombie in a film. Since. Um, and I love Monster in a Crate. That's got to be my favourite one, especially the end scene where you just see the eyes open when he thinks he's just put him, put him in the river. And they, that's like another cliffhanger. Um, I'd love them to revisit that one. So, um, and yeah, it was, I mean, yeah, I mean, you've got really good actors in this, Adrian Barbu, Hal, Hal, Holbrook, um, E.G. Marshall, Ed Harris. Um, and uh, I, 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 I want to like go back to the, the Father's Day thing with the epilogue, that one scene when the, the dad said to, uh, to the wife, um, that's why God made fathers, <laughs> as he like smugly drinks his his drink or a cigarette or something. Um, I don't know if it's Stephen King who plays on this father figure aspect, but you get that in a lot of his films where there is either daddy issues going on, um, which is quite intriguing. So yeah, I'm going to give it, I'm probably going to give it a 10 because I've watched it so many times. <laughs> I think it deserves a 10. So uh, I think I've got the VHS. <laughs> So, yeah, ten out of ten for me. So I will open the floor up to whoever wishes to speak. So you uh, you mentioned the sequel to this creature, too, which is equally as good as this one. But um, we don't go down the road. You mentioned Creature Three because that is just. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, what happened there? It's <laughs> yes, it's diabolical. It's, it's just awful. But, Halloween uh, 3 was pretty bad as well. <laughs> yeah, first films yeah. always are. Yeah. 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 So the, the second installment, Creepshow 2, is as good as the first one. Um, <coughs> but maybe someday we'll review that one, maybe next year. But, um, yeah, all in all, it is a good anthology movie. And it's a shame we don't get more anthology movies made like this with different stories but it's they just don't seem to do it anymore which is a shame can, can i just say susan i wouldn't try your sand fairy at the beach you no know, you wouldn't no don't don't try your sand fairy All right. there's some youtube there's some youtubers called um r and j productions and they've literally just tried this theory what well, this theory are they how did they get on <laughs> they still alive. Did any of them die? <laughs> the little brother had to dig him out. Oh, so you couldn't get out then, even if the sand was wet. No, but I, I would say yeah, because no, the sand. And he couldn't breathe. He said he, said he couldn't breathe as well. So he's like, yeah, I mean, I, I, not I, that I'm plugging another channel. I, 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 I would out. <laughs> I would say that the sand being all wet would suck you in, like quicksand. Oh wow! Yeah. And going but, back to the going back to that scene with the TV in the sand, Alid, it's a movie. <laughs> I, know, I know, but I know it's a nitpick, but it wasn't even wet. I mean, it was just completely intact and completely fine. And and another thing is that the actor could really easily get out of there because you could see the sand moving, which meant it was really easy to get out of. He wasn't really locked in that sand. But now, nowadays, you could see it moving up and down. And it was, oh, you can easily get out. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, it was Ted Danson, man. <laughs> I'm a bit worried, though, during this cast, because uh, 
Craig is drinking some fizzy drink. And we know what happens. It, it definitely does turn into the to uh, the, the creep show. <laughs> It's Coke Zero. There's no sugar. Oh, that's all right, there. That's all right because we don't want. And, 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 and other beverages are available. Just get that in. Y- yes. Well, I'm going to do last seven night. up. Seven yes. up. Um, you got not product tango. Not product I'm not product yeah. placing, but I was on the tequilas, and I also had one of my favourites, which is a Dr Pepper and amaretto, which went down nice. <laughs> wow. Sorry. It was a birthday party. Happy birthday, Glenn. Yeah, happy birthday. Who's Glenn? My friend Glenn. He went go-karting. Oh, how well, did you get on? Yeah, really good. Oh. <laughs> That's good. Oh. We, better get back. We, better get, yeah, we better get back to the creep show. Uh, I thought this is what it is. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's... it's, it's <laughs> Could, the, the, we can get away with the freak show, but you know, not the creep show. Uh, <laughs> depends who you ask. We are hey? the freak show. Depends who you ask. Huh? Anyway, does uh, anybody else have anything to say about the creep show? So the the one thing that I did like was the I loved I I loved the 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 bit between between scenes where it goes into animation and then into. Comic oh, the comic book, book. yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree, Craig. That's that's freaking awesome. I it love reminds it. me of that old children's show, Zap. Yes, yeah. yes, it does. Yeah, yeah Zap. Um, yeah, in the nineties, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I just Zap, love that. Zap was after this. Yeah, th- Zap wasn't a horror. Zap was like a silly, up. silly cartoon thing. Yeah, with the telly remote, wasn't it? Yeah. I love part two, though. I know we're not supposed to talk about part two, but when the guy opens the van door and he chucks all the comics out at, in the epilogue. Brilliant. You won't get that in a film nowadays, you know? Well, this is it. That's what I was saying. You don't get movies where you've got you know, five different stories in one movie. and They're not really connected at all. Apart from the, the only thing connection in this movie is they're out of a comic. That's the only yeah. connection. But they're, they're separate stories. Separate you can buy, yeah. buy the graphic novels now. They're available. Of, um, cool. Yeah. But, uh, but what I like to you say with the comic, the comic, you know, the comic section is what you saw. There was all those adverts. You know, um, yeah. Muscle, muscle up, be a muscle man. And, and as it's been mentioned, buy a voodoo doll. I mean, you did used to. I mean, I've, I used to read comics back in the, when I was younger. All these superhero DC and Marvel, and you used to get all them sort of adverts. Sea mm. monkeys, buy the sea monkeys, and all like that, and get a free twinkie. Buy one, get one free twinkie. Oh god! Uh, excuse oh, me. Oh, got one free. Oh right, okay. Oh, I thought, uh... That wasn't very horse-like, was it? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh dear! Retail, retail sports Retails what? Couldn't you break it up a bit? <laughs> it's retail speak. Oh, oh retail speak. I have to edit that bit. The only thing in this comic book is the X Files board game. Trust no one. Is there an X Files board game? Apparently. Yeah, it's a. How do you play a board game of X Files? So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today as we have assembled here today. And make sure you leave comments, click like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next week for some more podcasts.